In the last video of the introduction, before we actually start working problems, let's go through some tips that might help you study for the test and help you during the actual test itself to be more accurate and get more questions right. The first tip, which I preach for every standardized test, especially those that have um, some restricted time as this test does, is keep moving. Don't get bogged down in one question. If you spend five minutes on one question in the middle of the test, it's just a terrible use of time. You have to be able to identify when you're getting stuck and say to yourself, let me skip this, circle it, I'll come back later. Um, some students don't have much problems with time on this te test, others do, so this really depends on your current time issue, uh, how much you have problems with time. But definitely, overall, it's a good, it's good practice, whether you have no time problems or a ton of time problems, to always skip questions that seem really hard. They're going to challenge you mentally. Finish all the easy stuff first and then come back to the harder stuff at the end. Second, know your calculator. I'll be using a TI-83 Plus in these videos, so if you don't have that one, what I do with the calculator may not be what you need to do with the calculator. So you want to know your calculator. You want to know how to calculate things like regression. You want to know how to input functions. You want to know how to find the maximum, the minimum values, where functions intersect. You want to know how to change the window so you can view it properly. Uh, using the answer key, as you'll see me do in the video, is really helpful just to as a shortcut for doing calculations. Uh, NPR, NCR, calculating those, all these kinds of things. So the more you know how to use your calculator, the more prepared you're going to be to tackle some of the questions you'll see in this test. Be flexible. So there, in the videos, I'll often show you the best way that I think to do the problem, and occasionally I'll show you other ways. But with many of these problems, there's more than one way to, fit, to complete them. So when you're doing the test, one way to check your answers is to try to do the question a different way, again, assuming you've got time. But if you do the question in a different way and you get it right, you get the same answer, you can be pretty confident that you've gotten it right. Also, when you're reviewing, when you're studying, when you see a question like one I do in the videos, you come up with a method to do it. See if there are any other methods you can solve that problem. And often there's going to be more than one method on many of these questions to solve it. And if you're and if you want, share that method either in the comments of the video or in the uh, comments on the page of the videos posted on my site, wherever you're watching the video. And uh, we'll see if we can collect all the different ways we can solve these problems. When you're doing questions, draw pictures, as you'll see I'll do all the time in the videos, and graph functions. Sometimes graphing the functions can make the question much easier uh, rather than trying to solve it analytically. One note in math too, again, something I'll point out in the question. Sometimes it's useful to use the calculator to just brute force trigon trigonometry questions. So instead of knowing things like co-function identities and double angle formulas, sometimes just arc cosigning or plugging in an angle or just coming up with your own numbers can short circuit all that. You don't have to know those identities. You can just use your calculator to get to the answer. And I'll show you what I mean by that in some of these questions. Once you've done all these practice questions, once you've done all the practice tests and you're out of real tests, where do you go for more material? There's two big company books I recommend in general. Princeton Review, I think, is the most balanced. I think they do a good job, best they can, of capturing what real SAT Math 1 and 2 questions are like. So they're a definitely a good place to look. If you're looking for challenging material, Barron's is it. I generally don't like using material that's harder than what's on the test, but if that's what you're looking for, Barron's is okay. But I think the best place to look for additional material is books by tutors. So tutors like me have come up with their own questions, and they often really know the tests very well. So it's good to get some, some feedback and some practice questions from them because they all know sometimes better than the big companies what these tests are about. So definitely check into those options as well. All right, that is it for our intro videos. Let's dive right in to our problems. And let me know if you have any questions or comments along the way. And let's go ahead and get started.